if you first learn how to practice what you need because you've got the proper guidance, you have supervision, you're following the process and if you practice what you need not what you like, but what you need to practice to upgrade your playing and of course this means you also understand what is the difference between practicing and playing and can apply it, not just knowing theoretically but can actually do it if you do that, then you will come very soon to a point in which you can actually practice what you like is ironically this is the thing, or paradoxically you could say, because actually uh, one always is prone, is as a beginner or as an intermediate player, sometimes is prone to practice things that, 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 that you like, right? What do you like to practice that? But maybe that's not upgrading your playing. So maybe what you need is attention and rhythm or know, other thing, other area, everyone has different weak points. And my duty as a coach, that's what we are doing in Skype, is to check that and to give you what you need. Maybe some people don't like a lot of say, I don't like counting or I don't love, like metro and play. <laughs> but yeah, but you need it. Now, if, if you pass through that apparent obstacle, blockage or difficulty, if you pass over this challenge and can make it, just like in video game people do love challenges or risky sports or anything, so if you can have enough determination and enough, cl enough clarity of mind um, and freedom from doubt that you can pass through this obstacle and then actually do what, practice what you need, then you will amazingly enough, come to the point that, that you can, and soon, very soon, in which you actually, you find yourself practicing what you like all the time and playing what you like. Because how do you like to play? You want to play efficiently, properly, feeling comfortable, or you want to play with fear and, and, and always with the thought, that here I will skew up this, this uh, Passes because I don't have enough pick out here. My skill sucks here. There's poor that the rhythm here. This is it's not enjoyable unless you are masochistic inclined, right? So, therefore, the solution to this thing is, is to first understand what is the difference between what you what is practice and playing, apply it with the teacher. That's what we do in Skype exactly. and then go through the process and, and practice what you need. Sometimes we like it, sometimes we don't like, but if we keep doing it, it will come very soon the moment that you find yourself practicing and playing everything is only what you like. Because you, you understood why it was important to do that, and now you can develop and flourish following those doors that opened by your practicing what you needed before. The reason is it makes sense and there is a reason why it, ha it happens. And I think that these are big secrets in the, in the learning process of Flamengo Guitar because people keep avoiding things also with ideas in their own mind. They, they maybe think, I never had good Picado. How many of you watching this video now have thought one time, I, may, I, may, I will never play well Picado? Well, guess what? 90% of the time that people say these things, they are wrong. Or, I, am, I have bad rhythm. No, you don't have rhythm. It's not that you don't have rhythm. It's that, that you have not practiced it properly. Properly means with the proper supervision. Not how much time you practice. It's not about how much time. Again, if I go rowing all night there with the boat, I go there to the, to the port and then get the boat and, and get rowing all the time, but the anchor is there. I, I don't move because they take, take off the anchor first. You pull this damn anchor and, and, and get, get, get rid of this anchor, otherwise you're not going anywhere. Right, so this, which are the anchors? That for that, that's why we need a teacher. That's why I said, do it yourself and be confused forever. Because you will never get rid of, the, of this doubt, wrong repetition, the dangers of not having supervision. Right? It's that like learning to fly an airplane alone, following tutorials of YouTube, learning how to land for the first time without simulation flight, with the real airplane, 
good luck, I see you from here better, <laughs> with you there. So you know, things you need supervision, of course you need supervision, but once you understood the importance and the fun that is there in learning, in the learning process. Me ayudó porque descubrí ahí el, la improvisación. La improvisación es algo que yo pienso que cada músico debería, cada músico del estilo que sea, del clásico, del flamenco, de cualquier otra música debería, debería aprender porque la improvisación te da mucha libertad y a la vez te da mucho conocimiento de, de dónde estás tocando y cómo estás tocando, de qué armonías están en cada momento. ¿no? Pablo, Paco, ¿qué es para usted la música popular y qué es la música elitista? Yo creo que la música elitista es el refinamiento de la música popular. Por ejemplo, el flamenco. El flamenco originalmente es una música popular, la música del pueblo de Andalucía. Pero creo que ya no le pertenece más al pueblo, porque de pronto habemos gente que nos hemos pasado toda una vida encerrados puliendo esa expresión popular. Entonces ha llegado a un nivel en el que, en el, que el pueblo ya no, no, no tiene acceso, sobre todo a los matices que vamos consiguiendo la gente como yo, que nos pasamos muchas horas eh, elaborando esa música.